Thank you, Brother David. I just thinking about all the cards and the things that you've done for me here on my birthday, the gifts and so on. Appreciate it tonight. Appreciate your love that you have shown to me throughout the years and thank you for your testimony. I was thinking about uh, Brother Tim's testimony. I, I'd, I'd say to anybody, don't lift me up. I'm not higher than I belong. And because I've seen these things happen too many times, because I'm just a I'm just a minister called of God, nothing else. I don't know if I'll be living or if I'll be in the ground whenever the rapture takes place, so don't think that I'll ever think that that I'm I'm gonna be here because I don't know that. And I don't want any elevation of any kind. I just wanna be humble and a servant of God. I didn't preach the message this morning for to show that I was humble. I preached it because I felt what I was saying in my heart. And uh, so to whatever, to whatever that offers to you, then you can accept it in that way. Because God is good all the time and he watches over us and he watches over me. We, Jesus told his disciples, said, uh, I won't be here with you always. Thank you. Brother David said, I won't always be here with you, but he said, uh, my time to his, to his brothers, to those of his family members, but he said, your time is always ready. So, but he knew when his time was coming. When he was in Jerusalem at the, at the feast there in the fall of the year, that's when he said those words. And then whenever he had another six months to live, because he said, I know when my time come, and he knew that it would be. It passed over time because whenever he was in Jericho, I was thinking about this week, uh, your, your, <clears throat> your scriptures talk about uh, two men, um, maybe Matthew and, and uh, Luke both talk about two men being there <clears throat> at the edge of Jesus, as Jesus went through, uh, as, as he went through the city of Jericho at that time, this would be his last trip there. As he goes through, he tells, uh, there's a man on the outside of Jericho, two men out there, and both of them are crying out for healing. And uh, it, it expresses, don't give any name of anyone, but it expresses that they were healed because he asked them what they wanted. I mean, he could see that they were blind. But he said, what, ask them what they wanted, and he, they said that we may receive our sight. And he healed them both there. But then in Mark, the man, there was one man which I remember Brother Jackson going over that years ago, he said, there's one man that stands out among the two. And his name is named Bartimaeus. And uh, that, that blind man, as, he, as Jesus goes through there, this is his last trip. He's been to Jericho before, but this is the last time he'll ever go there. And he said, uh, blind Bartimaeus, it don't mention the other one at this time, but it's the same, same story, same instance. But there's one that stands out because uh, whenever Jesus heals him, what does he do? He follows him in the way. Not in Jesus' way, but as they travel. 
I don't know how far he goes, if he goes to Jerusalem all the way or not, but anyway, and then whenever Jesus tells his disciples after two days, then the Son of Man will be, uh, they will kill, kill him in Jerusalem. He will be, he will be killed. And, and of course, it, this was very disturbing to them. But then two of them, James and John's mother, they said, uh, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, grant that my two sons would set one on one side of you and one on the other in your kingdom. He said, this is not mine to give, but it will be given to those that have been appointed of the Father to give. And uh, tonight each one of us has an appointment, appointment that we must keep. It's either appointment for life or death. And I was thinking about a certain sister this morning that come up for prayer is having double knee replacement this week. So uh, I, I hope she don't care if I mention her sister Katie having double knee replacement this week. You remember her in prayer because we don't want to forget our brothers and sisters who stand in need, who desire help from the Lord. So uh, you may have to go through with some things. You may not, you may not have the s same feeling that Sister Michelle had. But then if you do, then that's some kind of a sign to you that God wants to do something for you. Don't, don't never let a, a, a nurse or a doctor tell you God can't take care of gallstones. He can dissolve them just like he can anything else. Because is anything too hard for God? That's what the Bible says. Nothing too hard for him. So we've, uh, I don't believe in going just strictly by feelings. But then there's something inside sometimes give us a feeling. This is what needs to be done. And we go with that, then we'll follow, be following the Lord. If we go by our, uh, not natural instinct, but spiritual instincts, yes. that we may be able to, uh, to find grace in the time of need, as the Bible says, I mean, to find grace in the time of need is not always the same thing. It can be different things in our life that we need grace for to be able to go through something or to find favor in the eyes of the Lord. Many times our, in our life, uh, things happen to us for trials. We, because it's, it says the trial of your faith is more precious than that, that of gold. So sometimes uh, a trial is going to bring results. Always. If it's a trial that is put on us uh, by the devil and the Lord wants to intervene, then he'll do it. Remember, remember Job, God gave him permission, but God didn't put what he had on him. It, he, he, he opened it up for the devil to do what he would because he, he done knew from, from way back before Job when the, it said when the sons of God uh, was, was before the Lord, which would have been the angels. When they, they were part of God's first cre creation, but they were created beings. Uh, the angels were. And one of, the, one of these days the Bible tells us that we will be as the angels. So uh, that was Jesus talking to the Sadducees. So tonight it's very important that we extrep, express our desires, our feelings to him to let him know uh, what, that we, 
what, what we should do in times of need because every one of us is going to have a time of need in our life. That we're going to need a divine intervention because the Bible says no man lives to himself, no man dies to himself. Just as, as Job went through his trial, he was tested down to the very skin of his body. And nothing, nothing was easy. It's spoken of by James there, the trial of Job. We have trials, but God, God is looking for perfection now. He's not looking for feelings in that that we feel this or we feel that to, to the extent that we're going on feelings. But there will be instances in our lives that we need to go. It's not, it's not just it will put something in our mind, in our body, that we need to do something. Well, that's the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. Amen. But if we just go on feelings and we feel sorry for this, feel sorry for that, I, I was talking to someone the other day about uh, this thing about uh, at Christmas time. They're showing these poor little dogs and cats. I, I feel sorry for them. But they're praying way in a manger. My, that don't belong to that. They, they, they just try to, they try to get you away to a pitiful uh, circumstance in order to uh, try to get feelings. And the only one that was in that manger that done any good was Jesus Christ. No doubt there's a lot of, a lot of little babies that uh, were born and put in a manger. But he is the only one that was born, born and put in a manger that was going to be for our salvation. For our deliverance was the Lord Jesus Christ. And he knows the feeling of our, our infirmities. Of what that we are of what that we are being <clears throat> agonized or tested by because there are times that people go through tests. Abraham went through tests to where that he, he even began to doubt. It says Abraham believed God. But then whenever he gets to be 85 years of age, after God has promised him at 75, he'd, had a, he'd have a son. Then by the time he's 85, then Sarah begins to try to fix something up for him. And, and he, thought this was, he thought this was the right thing. Look what caused, what's causing them the trouble over there now. Ishmael's children. Well, Ishmael was Abraham's son, but Ishmael wasn't a promised son. And, and, and to the church of the living God, and Isaac was a promised son, but then whenever God spoke to Abraham, he was looking down in the future of when that, uh, the son that Abraham was looking for would be Jesus Christ. Because it, it, uh, Paul expresses it in this way. He says seeds, not many, one seed, which is Christ, he said. Right. Not many seeds, but one. And he is our hope and our claim on life. I'm going back to my message I've been on again tonight. I just thought I'd say that. <laughs> Because I, I believe that the ministry that God has raised up this tonight, I believe that the ones that God has raised up for this end time, 
And I, I believe that we know, I wouldn't say we know every one of them. But we do know a portion of the ministry that God has raised up. I don't know. I know that in, in the Philippines there's different ministers. Brother Jimmy is the one that we recognize, but my, whenever we were there, uh, that first time, especially the first time that we were there, there were several ministers. There's two or three of them that couldn't even speak English. They weren't more than that tall. Probably five feet would have been tall for them. And here they had they'd walked eight, eight hours to catch a ride to be there in the meeting and they, they couldn't even speak English and they couldn't understand it. I didn't know that when I was preaching. But here they said as though that they did understand and whenever I found out that they didn't understand, that, that made me feel smaller than what they were. But they sat there because it was a service that they felt that was ordained of God. And, and a little 10-year-old boy, which there's no 10-year-old boy here that small. A little 10-year-old boy had walked that distance with them to catch a ride, which was another seven hours or so. And to be able to, to, be able to see that, what, what they were there for was to be able to carry something back even though they didn't understand they, there's a spirit that goes along with the truth that will help you, that will help someone that don't know. I mean, someone speaks in tongues. I mean, you don't understand it until it's interpreted. There's three tongues this, this morning. But then the last one was interpreted. If I wouldn't have known one thing about any of it unless there had been an interpretation. But then when the interpretation come, then that, w that brought understanding. But they had no interpreter. They were just going, they were just there because they wanted to be in the presence of somebody that knew God. And Whenever you think about it, the American people, if you come from America and you go to a place like that and you, you try to help them, you don't deceive them. Brother, sister, they're going to make you feel small. Those, those women, it wasn't very big, but they'd come in and they'd bow down for it to you as they come through and Shake your hand. And it, it wasn't bowing down to worship you. But they were bound out in, in reverence to what that God was doing. And it was, it was difficult for me. It really was. It was difficult for me because that uh, people there just, and then to find out, at the end of the day, service started at 9 o'clock and lasted till 8 o'clock that night. 9 o'clock in the morning. And lasted till that time. Of course, we broke for a meal. But then come to find out, there was some people from an island, I don't know, 15 or 20 people from an island that had stood outside that couldn't get in. They stood outside the building that couldn't get in. They asked, I wonder if they would let us come in and shake their hand. Now, I tell you, that makes, that, that makes you feel real big. No, it makes you feel feel small it does and I know it would either one of these brothers 
You, you would cry if you went to a place like that and see what, the, what they have with what they don't have. Some of them come from Manila to Baguio City. A week wages $36. And they spent most of that just to come to be in a meeting there with us. And see, you could see what Jesus was talking about. When the widow come up with those little mites that she had, but it was all she had. And after it was over with, then we find how that uh, he talks to his disciples. He said, you see that poor widow? He said, there's a lot of people throwed in a lot of money. But he said she threw in, I believe it was two mites. It was all it was. But he said she threw in all of her living. She gave more than everybody. And that's what, that's what I'm trying to say tonight. I'm not asking for anything. God is more than supplied our needs. Here at Faith Assembly, He has. It's because, why? Because people love God. And because of that, then... I'm not asking for anything. I'm just asking that we together as families, as individuals, that we press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Because I don't, want to, I don't want any of you to be left out. I don't want any of you to be left out on the blessings of God that He's going to give in this end time. That's why I, that's why I said the, same, the things I did this morning. And just to say, as I've said about Brother Kevin, the 12th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians there, it's putting a body together. That's what he's doing. He's putting a body together with the Spirit of God. Whenever it says there, the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit, every gift is given by the Spirit. Every one of them. They are given by the Spirit because he wants you to recognize where they come from. It's not, it's not something that you can claim on your own. It's something God gives you. And every one of us has something that God can recognize if we put it in His hand. He's not leaving any of us out in this hour right. as, as people. I've said I was going to get on my subject. I will. Lord willing. <laughs> Because here I've got a picture, I've got a picture of a bride here. That's what we're, that's what we're going for. Yes. Amen. The bride of Jesus Christ. That's what we're building this up for. Because it's going to be one of these days, it's going to be completed. Amen. Yes, praise the Lord. Every, every joint... <laughs> as it's supplied, is going to be there. Because we're, we're in need of it. Our hand is not just hanging there on a, on a loop. No, there's whatever little muscle there is left, maybe. It is there to help us to be able to raise that and there's all kinds of little things in there. I've seen the x-rays. I didn't know it looked like that. 
until I saw the x-rays. But God, it's a good thing God put skin on that because it would have looked awful otherwise. <laughs> a skull don't look too good, but God put skin on it. So, as old saying used to go, beauty only goes skin deep. Because God has made us that way. He's, he's made us to be a part of something. That's the scripture that I read this morning about what he's talking about there when, he, uh, when the, the lawyer asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And what I said this morning was, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy being, and thy neighbor as thyself. God put it to where that we wouldn't, we couldn't just love Him. We've got to love His family. This is as, this is as much of it showing the grace of God is to love one another as it is to say that we love God. Because this, of course, is a picture. But this is what Jesus Christ is coming after. Do you see, do you see the beauty in the setting? This is you. Can you put yourself in that picture? This is Him. That's what we're, what we're expected to be. That's our expectation. Is because one day it's going to happen. Not too far off whenever I see the world. Whenever I see the nation and these people... Out here marching. Just everything, just marching. They got to march. But then, usually, when an army marches, they've got a headship. These had no headship. They're just out there marching. Whatever comes their way, they're going to march for it. But we're marching too. Because we're in the army. According to the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians, we, are, we have that armament on. Or we're getting it on. I hope that we are not leaving something off. What does he start with? He goes from the head down. That's where it's all got to start from. The head. The thinking. You're converted. You're born again from the inside. Because there's got to be a change of the heart. I've told you before, whenever I got a, under conviction, even at 10 and 12 years old, my heart would just jump. Amen. I could hear it in my ears. But the only thing will stop that, only satisfaction you'll get from that is to surrender. We're in an army that has surrendered. And then when Jesus talks about it, He says, take up your cross and follow Me. 
So we become followers of his great army. Whenever, whenever the bride of Jesus Christ leaves this earth, this earth can look for seven years. Of test, of trials, three and a half years of great tribulation. Paul said, We are troubled on every side, but we're not despondent. The nobody that wants to go through with what Paul went through. And he wouldn't he wouldn't get four in a church board today. Because he'd been in jail too many times. It had too many troubles. It had been beat up. Bruised up. Beat up. Left for dead. This is not our, this is not our portion tonight. But as Paul said... Everybody that listened to Paul didn't go through with what he did. Many people couldn't take it. What does the scripture say? That he wouldn't let us be tempted above that we were able to bear. Everybody cannot bear the same thing. They're brothers that can't bear what some sisters go through. And some sisters can't go through with what some brothers have to go through. What does the Scripture say? That man looks on the outward, but God looks on the heart. I want to turn to Revelation 20. Going to the first verse. Or for the to the fourth verse. And I saw thrones. He didn't say he saw one throne. I saw thrones. And they sat upon them. Who's they? Who is it talking about? These are not mystery people. This, this is talking about people that God has appointed. 
the they is included in faith assembly. That's why we're learning. Jesus said, come and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. And judgment was given unto them. There's your Supreme Court. They're done already appointed. They got their appointment. They done had their appointment when they were born. They just had to work their way. I don't work in the sense of work. They had to be diverted into that. Or converted into it. That's why we've been, some wouldn't like it. That's why we've been thinned out as we have. Because God knew who he could trust. He knew who was going to go with him because whenever I don't say this to condemn him anybody. Because whenever I preached the third day, everybody didn't understand it. Everybody in here didn't understand it. But what happened? Brother Jackson used to say, stick around, we'll see who's right. You stuck around. Because there had to be another shoe to drop. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not, I'm not guessing. Because... Whenever he's talking about thrones here, he's talking about judgments. And judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of them. See, he's, he's talking about two different people here. Because he's already talked here about judgment was given to them. Then what does he see after that? I saw them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. See, they didn't have a complete picture. They were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. There are little children and, and people today over in the Middle East that ISIS is killing and carrying little children's heads around. Putting them on fence posts. I don't know what their reward is. But God sees it. They don't have what we have. They have the witness of Jesus, but they don't have what we have. Because it's not given to them. You can't help it if it's not given to you. But 
But this is not even the tribulation yet. But it is for some people. Whenever they're led down to the to the Mediterranean, men, grown men, go down there and have to get down on their knees. And their heads chopped off and the blood goes into the water. Just because they wouldn't deny Christ. A lot of it is young people. You remember Columbine? The two young boys just last week in a certain state they were they were planning on a column nine columbine killing like that. One of them thirteen, one of them fourteen. They told some of their friends to stay home, told the others wear white shirts so, uh, so that we can identify you to, to not be killed, but really what they were wanting them to wear, white shirts, was so the blood would show up. This is an evil generation in leadership in Washington and these states have caused it. It's your fault. Because you're just a bunch of reprobates. You don't care. No, we're not going to, we're not going to let you supreme vet these people. Why not? You just got a bunch of people up there in Washington wants everybody to come in for votes. You're evil. You're ungodly. And and then for the word of God, which would be Jews. This is it this is talking about tribulation people. The last three and a half years. Plus, as Brother Jackson said, those that have gone, that you can go back through the Holocaust and all through there. Those that are underneath the altar or out front of the altar today that have been given white robes. They're not resurrected yet, but they're given white robes for rest. They got there because of the Word of God, but they didn't, they didn't have enough in order for them to be pure and white, but God gave them that. In Revelation 6, under the fifth seal, how long? Their lives were taken from them. But they cry, how long? O Lord, holy and true, dost thou thou judge those that have done this? For the word of God, and, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is after the rapture takes place. But 
These are not throne people. They're not sitting up on thrones. But they have life. A different level of reward other than what you have. I'm talking to faith assembly tonight as though you are bride. As though this is what what you're working up to be or living up to be or whatever you want to call it. This is what we want to be. It takes Dedication for us to do so. That's why Brother Jackson would say, What did he did? About our lives about getting ready they lived and they reigned with Christ a thousand years in a lower capacity but with them whenever they get there they're not going to say well it's better for us Well, there's that bunch. It's better for them than it is for us. But the rest of the dead. Live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. This is... Resurrection begin, the first resurrection begin at Christ. Whenever He was raised, and them that were raised right afterward. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such a second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. See, they they have their portion, but it's not the same. I want to go to the 21st chapter now. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. This takes a thousand years for the oceans to go back up into the heavens as a vapor. Because this is what he's seeing. He is seeing after the thousand years is over a new heaven and a new earth and no more sea. I'm so glad for what I've heard. Because I feel that by the Lord's help we're filling in the gap, brother. Brother Charles, we're filling in the gap. Because it took a fivefold, it's taken a fivefold ministry to finish this out. It's not one um, one man job. No.
No more sea. Then John goes, goes into the holy city then. Which I want to read one verse of that. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. He sees that holy city. Goes from, goes from this to a city, but it's the same one. Praise the Lord. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God This, this is after the millennium is over. Just a few verses here. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. That's after what John has said there in the 8th chapter of the book of Romans. When Jesus is our elder brother, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. I hope to kind of go into this to where that maybe some of you some of you younger Christians, I'm not talking about children, but younger Christians will give a, get a chance to understand. Let me read that verse again. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. That's not talking about bride people. That's talking about those that have gone through the millennium and they've seen, uh, and they've seen an army come up against them there in Jerusalem. Many of it was their own loved ones. And there shall be no more death. See, this is after the second death. He says it later on. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. The you knew Jerusalem and what it, what it's all about and what it's for, will then be in the past. Because we go from being bride yes. to being kin. Amen. Our kin then is Jesus Christ. He, he's our big brother. Our elder brother. And he that sat up on the throne, which is God, said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. It's going to happen, friends. Yes, amen. The millennium will be over. 
there will be another age. Which to the saints of God there will be no, uh, no more night because it will all be day. I remember a few years ago someone disagreed with us. said, after we have lived here so long and we've got used to everything and more or less got kind of tired of what going on here, God will let us go to plant, from planet to planet to planet to see all this different animal life and everything like that. Who can get tired of being under the presence of God? He's got to change us. We've got to change in order to be able to stand it. <laughs> What you felt this morning will be an all be an all day feeling, which there's no night, so you just feel it all time. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he said unto me, It is done. In God's mind. I preached a message one time. When Jesus said it is finished, then your mansion was completed. <laughs> They've had Jesus up there 2,000 years laying out streets of pure gold which it says that they were clear as glass. Pure gold. Pure as glass. No, that's your life. Because what it is, as we become more and more and more like Jesus, we become less and less and less of what we are. That's why Paul can say, I die daily. Nevertheless I live, but not I, but Christ lives in me. Amen. Right. This is what you want. Is this what you feel tonight? That Amen. this is your desire? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's, it's in her hand. It's in her grasp. Yes. That's right. Praise the Lord. I'm Alpha and Amiga. And Amiga. The beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of, of the water of life freely. That's talking of now. There's no wonder. From the dream of Brother David, the water. That's water of life. To our sister's cream. That it come rushing in. We close the door to the world, but God opens it for His presence. Amen. Praise the Lord. We must, we must let the doors open for His presence to come in. Our lives, as. As it said there, as John say, says there, he said, Come now, Lord Jesus. He, was, he had seen so much. He had experienced so much here in the book of Revelation that he is ready. 
Even come now, Lord Jesus. Yes. That's what we will be. When that time has come, we'll be crying. With, with joy. With tears of joy, we will be crying, Come, Lord Jesus. Brother Kevin kind of takes after his dad. He can smile and cry at the same time. It's a, that's a happy smile. That's a happy time. We sing the song, Won't It Be Wonderful There? Having no burdens to bear. No more hip replacement, no more knee replacement, no more, no more disease. And I believe we're going to get a little bit of it before we leave here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. He that over, overcometh. This is us tonight. Yes, that's right. He that overcometh. It didn't just stop there. God don't leave you hanging out on a limb someplace. We're overcomers tonight. Amen. We are. Aren't you glad? Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sure, we're going through things. Most every one of us are going through some kind of a trial. It may be a family member. It may be a loved one. It may be ourselves going through some kind of a trial. But we're not left out. God knows it. Gone over to Brother Jerry's shop, his hands would look like that piano on the bottom of them. <laughs> Get to talking to him about the Lord, and he'd say, Woo, and pull up his sleeve, and there'd be big goosebumps all over him. God's, God can take dirty hands and make them clean. Right. He don't wash our hands for us. But he can make them clean even when we are in the worst of situations or worst of jobs. There's nothing too hard for God. Right. He that overcome us shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Yep. That goes for daughters too. Hey. God, don't, you, don't, leave the, don't use the masculine di gender just to point out that there will be no, no sisters in there. That's why I brought out what I did this morning about Simeon and Anna. Both of them were looking for something. They knew that it had to be close. The Bible says, you will not know the day nor the hour. But then he gives you reference saying, whenever you see that time coming. Turns right back around. Whenever you see that time coming, lift up your head. Lift up your eyes. For your redemption 
is drawing nigh. We don't have to know the day nor the hour to know that it's getting close. But we look around. The news is telling the picture and they don't know it. How wickedness, how men would get wiser and wickeder. Even he spoke that. God, there's no distance in time with God, just like it was with Abraham. There's no dis- distance in time with God because whenever he said that, men would get wiser, scientifically wiser, but they would be wickeder. Everybody's got to march. They're just opening themselves up to the devil. But there is a move. The move is on. It's a song. The move is on, my Lord. The move is on. Move on, brother. Move on, sister. This is the moving day. Praise the Lord. Amen. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But to the fearful and unbelieving... That's not you. That's not us. You may be you may be afraid of the dark. It's not talking about that. You may be afraid of a snake, which I am. I remember going to going to Canada and there's several other young people Canada they were coming down here and I was going to take them to the zoo and then take them to McDonald's and get them something to eat afterward and we went over to the zoo and here they had these snakes I said you all touch them snakes I'm not taking you to McDonald's if you You remember that, Greg? <laughs> they're part of God's creation. But they're the part that I can do without. <laughs> but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. That second death happens immediately after the thousand years is over. The fearful, the unbelieving. Those that have died that are in the ground, every one of them is dead in the ground at that time. Because whenever the second death comes, then you got hell gives up their dead. You got the grave, you got the sea, everything gives up the dead in it. Because they are judged out of the books. Reason why it mentioned books is because every one of them not going to be judged the same. Each one of them has their own book. But there's only one book of life. One book of life. At the end of the tribulation, there's only one book of life. But we're in the Lamb's book of life.
Do you get it tonight? Do you understand what that we are looking for? What we what we've got to look for? A look ahead. Praise the Lord. We're just about we're just about over the mountain, and whenever we get to the top of that, then we're going to look over into the promised land. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for what you do for us from day to day. For the life that you've given us to live. For the expression of your grace. Of your great love. I thank you for it tonight, Lord, that you have shown forth your love and your care for us. May you be glorified now, Lord, in it all. Bless your people, your children. Touch each need. We ask these things, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. May God bless you tonight. Turn the service over to Brother David at this time. Anyone has a need, feel free to come on. I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do. Oh, I don't know what I would do without the Lord. done for me Oh, I don't know what I would do without the Lord Oh, I don't know what I would do I don't know what I would do I don't know